let's just have a look and see what sort of results we've got in. If you, if you grab your phone and on your phone, you just go to your web browser, you type in www.menti.com and then you can put in that code at the top and you can join in. And we can see that 63 people have responded, which is great. And we can see that they're coming from quite a lot from Europe there, Central Europe, quite a lot in across the African continent too, which is good and a lot from Southern Asia. We've got someone in the Caribbean, lucky person in the Caribbean, um, and a couple from Scandinavia. One of those must be Jorn, I'm sure, and one must be Jen, and I'm sure there are some others too. Okay, so let's see what else you've said about this workshop. You can join this at any time. So how do you feel about the CCCM event? So nobody feels bored, which is great. So that might change as we go through the event, but at the moment, no one's bored. Two people are a little unsure. Fair enough, that's totally legitimate. 25 are hopeful, which I love, and 46 are excited, so fantastic. This is a great place to start. We'll be going onwards from here. Someone else is, is more hopeful, they've just, just popped up. So what about, wow, here you all go. There you all go to tell us which session you're interested in. So this is where all the session leads get excited and they start scrambling for competition. So what have we got? Minimum standards, Jen, out in the lead. Look at that. Um, global strategies, getting some interest. Capacity building, durable solutions, good stuff. What's this number for? Strategic messaging has only got five. Maybe the title isn't clear enough. This is a heck of a session. This is a super participative, interesting session where you are going to be on social media learning strategic messaging for CCCM, and it's going to be super valuable for your work going forward. I, I promise you that that's a fantastic session. We've just made a video to advertise it, so it will probably boom. It'll be even better. Once that video hits all the social media channels, Jorn, that's going to go through the roof. That'll be 500, not five. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then finally, I just asked you, if you could just give us one word of what is the number one challenge for CCCM going forward uh, or today. And this is interesting. So have a look at some of these words we've got on the screen here. So coordination is, is the biggest but they're all of a fairly similar size. So the more of you type that word, the bigger it becomes. Um, and I can see that's getting changed now as people are adding in. Feel free to keep adding to that. This poll will remain open even when I take it off screen. So you get a chance to see. If you have any problems at all with, um, with Mentimeter or with using Zoom, feel free to contact us. Um, just send a message. If you look in the um, in the chat function, you'll find someone called Alistair. Alistair's a really good person to talk to about that, but you can contact me or anyone else who is involved with the cluster. Um, so there you go. That is what we've got. So we're going to be using Mentimeter quite a lot through the week, and we're going to be using Zoom all the time. So with you, now you're getting excited about this and we're getting more and more answers, but with your permission, I am going to close this down. I can show it a little bit later and see how we're getting on. Um, the reason I'm gonna close it down is because I want us to have a look at a video that um, our working groups have made. So um, last year, there was a famous incident uh, where the working groups gave an update in a rather dramatic way Annika became an, a superstar overnight. I mean, she was everywhere across social media. So um, I don't know what they've done this time. Uh, well, actually I do because I was trying to ask them, I was trying to get them to be sensible and just focus and give me a quick update. Um, now, Juan, have we got that video ready to share? Okay, so Juan, you go ahead and share that. This is where we are. Keep our fingers crossed. I know first video of the meeting is always a, a challenge. 
Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm delighted to say we're going to hear some updates from the Global Cluster Working Groups today. Wait, 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 Charlie, but, but is it October already? How has the year gone by so quickly? Gio, it's, it's not October. We moved the cluster retreat to June. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so uh, thank you. So, um, but Hold on a sec, Charlie. There are people in this call I don't really know. Who are they? What do they do? Well, these are the work groups. We uh, have work group sessions for every retreat for decades. And it's so important to know what the main topics of the work streams are. I oh mean, God, uh, and all these bickering. And I'm sure this is why Jim from HLP AOR is not joining this call. And who is the baby? What baby? Answer in chat. We really need to have a working group on access. It is such an important topic in Yemen, Syria, Myanmar, Chad. If you agree, please write in the chat now. Jen, do you want us to pause? Yeah, so, no, I, I need to raise my hand. I want to introduce Bruce. I, I, I can't find where to raise my hand. Bruce is going to be leading a, a localization working group. Everybody knows Bruce. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Bruce, um, and I'm happy to announce we'll be starting a localization task force pretty soon. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. There is a lot of work to be done. There's also a lot of other important work going on, like the capacity development working group, which is closely related to localization. Uh, Elena, what have you been up to? Uh, thanks, Bruce. So the capacity building working group has launched a trainer super folder that can be used by trainers to share training material. You can access it from the Global CCM training page on the cluster website, and you can find there useful resources such as training modules for communities, tools to plan training, learning need assessment, and much more. Uh, the working group has also organized meetings, um, and we have presentation on remote learning and on the community coordination training tools that is also included in uh, uh, the community coordination tool toolbox that is connected with the work of the participation working group. But who is the baby? What baby? As part of the participation in the space and working group, we have piloted the tool in the community for the toolbox area where IOM and NRC teams have been coordinating together to work directly with the displaced community in building and leading participatory projects. Moreover, as participation is a constantly evolving area of work and highly contextual, the working group has been working closely together with the members in the last year to explore different methods of participation and in ways that we can support community-led projects with the aim of sharing these best practices and tools with our wider humanitarian community. The Sustainability, Connectivity and Clean Energy Working Group formerly known as the ARC, has been uh, mapping out the different stakeholders. We have uh, reached out to country operations and to engage uh, practitioners who are already uh, engaged in these important work streams. And we have uh, linked up to partners and also ensured cross uh, sectoral collaboration with the shelf cluster and uh, other relevant actors. So we uh, look forward to diving deeper into these discussions here in Virginia. So the ARA-based uh, working group is very happy and proud to announce that in April we have finalized and launched uh, the CCM paper on ARA-based approach. Please have a look at it if you haven't done it already. And the Camp Management Standards Working Group, which has released the field testing edition, has run pilot training, presented at the HMPW and CCCM Tuesday, and will report back on the great achievements from CCCM operations across the globe who are using the standards. And we also have very big news uh, for later on this summer. Oh, and for the newly minted joint working group between CCCM Cluster and HLP AOR, we're working to build up a community of practice, have hosted a number of meetings and webinars, and collected examples of collaborations, guidance from several countries when it comes to HLP issues in camps and do or durable solutions. So come and join us. 
Oh, now that I know everyone is, I really think that the biggest achievement goes to Marilyn for having a baby. And this baby. Yay. Thank you, CCCM Working Groups. Your dramatical skills. Can you just make sure? Just make sure you're on mute if you're not already. Otherwise, we'll hear me a thousand times, and no one wants to hear that. Okay, perfect. So, so yeah, congratulations to the working groups again. Fantastic drama skills. It gets better and better each year. I think next year we can expect to see interpretive dance or some sort of a ballet arrangement. Um, if you'd like the working groups to do that, if you'd like to see mime or dance or theater, please just send that in and I'm sure that can be arranged. We'll um, put that in the chat, let us know. Um, we'll try to make that happen. I'm getting thumbs up from Ingrid. Thank you, Ingrid. I, got, I think there was some applause from someone else as well. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there briefly and just check in with everyone. So that's why we're here. That's briefly who we are. And you're going to hear a lot more about who we are and why we're hearing more detail as we go through the week. Before we go into our first substantive session on strategy, um, I would just like to just check in and check, see if anyone's got any questions about the meeting, the purpose of the meeting, or um, any of the technology, if that's okay. If you do have a question, feel free to put it into the chat, raise your hand, let us know. Um, before we go into the first session. And the first session is going to be on strategy. Okay, I'm going to take that quiet as a no, but um, I will keep my eye on the chat. And I'll also ask Alistair if he can keep his eye on the chat. And Alistair, feel free to shout at me if I've missed something on the chat. Okay, great. Well, then five minutes ahead of time, which may be a bigger break in the middle, but let's see. Let's go and look at the strategy session. So first up, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to ask Dare and Wan to join me on our virtual stage. So have a seat, Dare, have a seat, Wan. Come and sit next to me and say hello. Thank you, thank you, Charlie. Hi. No problem at all. Help yourself to the free drinks and food that's obviously in front of you. You'll enjoy that. Okay, so as you know, as all of you know, hopefully, um, the CCCM Global Cluster Strategy for 2021 to 2023 was launched and um, is, is now out and available for people to read. And we thought this was a really good opportunity just to learn a little bit more from Darren Wan about this. I had the pleasure of being involved in it too, so I'm particularly interested in it. Um, so what we're going to do in this session is I'm going to spend some time asking Darren Wan some questions about it. And this is where your opportunity is to feed in your questions. Um, and then once, once we've had that, we're going to hear from some of the key stakeholders from the strategy via a video that we've got. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to ask Darren Wan to present and present in detail on the strategy. And this will really be the opportunity for all of you to feed in directly and indirectly, indirectly through a poll, directly through questions, to, to hear more about this strategy, to say what you think, to let us know how it will work in your operating context. The most important thing about any strategy is that it's implementable, and it will be really interesting to hear how this is going to work for you. So without further ado, let, let's turn to, to Dan and Juan, and let's maybe start a question for you, Juan. So why, why is the strategy being reviewed now? Um, why, why did you choose to do that? Right. Um, the previous global cluster strategy kind of came to an end in 2021. Um, and I think this sort of coincide also the fact that I think our strategic advisory group has also been with us now for a couple of years. Um, and it felt like, and you know, with COVID going on, um, the increased workload, but it also gave us more time to engage with other with each other and and I think it was important to for us to develop the strategy collectively I mean the from the global cluster coordinator side but also together with the strategic advisory group um, and I think it was I think we focus a lot more on also identifying you know who's our audience and how we want to go about it together 
Great, thanks, Juan. And there was a question in the chat about sharing the link, and, the, and you've put the link in there. So if anyone wants the link to go to it, have it in the background. It's just there in the chat. So thank you for that. So then one for Dare, difficult one. So when I first came to this, I was a bit confused by this whole idea of the global cluster and the country clusters. So, so what is the difference between the global strategy versus a country-focused CCCM strategy? I think it's a difficult question. I mean, in general, it is also confusing having been coordinated the cluster in the field uh, in different countries, developed uh, HRPs, developed specific cluster strategies, and moving to the global cluster to develop a global cluster strategy. It is different in a complementary manner. It does not mean that they are working in silos, but the other way. Our audience in the global level is the clusters and the cluster-like mechanisms in the field. So what we are doing in our strategy is to see to which extent we can help the field colleagues in different operations to bring their strategies in reality. So whatever element you look in this strategy, colleagues, is a way to complement and to bring the bigger added value for whatever you are missing overally in your strategies. It is when you work on your strategy, your strategies provide directly the, the support and the assistance to the to the people of concerns through working operationally with the cluster members, with the partners, with the local authorities, etc. Our strategy does not include working directly with the cluster members in the field. It does not include any camp or a camp-like setup. It rather includes a way, an umbrella to help you in the, in the field to bring more resources for your strategy, more expertise for your strategy, more funds for your strategy, et cetera. So it is just to complement your field strategies. It is not a silo or not a repetition. It is a global cluster helping the field clusters and the cluster-like mechanisms. Okay, thanks there. Um, so Juan, tell us about how you did it. What, what was the process that you underwent to develop this strategy? Right. I think one of the most important thing we did at the beginning was that we were going to need help. Um, and I guess that's where you came in, Charlie. Um, we felt it was a useful um, process to actually really invest in, in how we're going to do this. So with, uh, you know, with you helping us to facilitate the discussion, the consultation, we work with the strategic advisory group. We had series of meetings to discuss. And in between, we also did um, consultations uh, through surveys and I think some side discussions as well with our um, colleagues in the field. Um, and then we also had um, a sort of validation um, exercise at, at last year's global meeting as well in November. Um, so I, I hope that most of the people who here, you know, have been part of this process. Um, and if not, you know, we're, we're always happy to hear more about um, what you would like to see or expect from, from the global cluster. I think that's a really good point, isn't it? In terms of who's involved in developing it, but maybe a question for you, Dare, in terms of who needs to be involved, who needs to buy in to make this work in terms of implementing the strategy? From your, from your perspective, who needs to buy in? Oh, you're on mute, Dare. Oh, no, the first beginner's mistake. Uh, my, my answer, colleagues, to, to Charlie's question is, in one sentence, we are all in the same ship. It's, it's everybody's involvement. We all have to support the strategy. We did not drop the strategy to hang it behind us, you know, in any shell. It is a strategy that has to really be implemented and, and show because what we need is, we in the global level, we have to reach different actors to make this strategy successful. Our bread and butter is what we hear from you and to which extent you are using this strategy to implement the activities. But in the meantime, to give us your feedback, to which extent we need to further utilize the strategies when we should involve you in, in our way of implementing strategies, when you should also use and utilize the strategies. So the answer is, of course, the, the, the two coordinators, one and myself, are the are the global accountable coordinators for the strategy as your names mentioned in your strategies. But in the end of the day, it is a global and it's, it's a collective ownership. We all have to equally own it to be able to succeed. This is the only meaning of success for CCCM cluster strategy is a collective ownership with the accountability of the global cluster. So that makes sense. But then who, 
particularly is this strategy aimed at one? So who, who are the stakeholders? Who are the key stakeholders? Who, who is this directed towards? I think we've certainly structured the strategy this time with a lot more focus to addressing specifically that, uh, Charlie, and we debated it quite a bit. Um, but I think, you know, clearly our stakeholders is, or our key responsibilities is how we can support the field clusters um, to do their job. Um, and I think that kind of like frame how, how we see um, our kind of priority work areas, um, how we're going to focus and, and target our work. Um, and I think we also looked at, you know, the broader kind of cluster members, but I think in particularly what came out through the discussions is, is the other clusters. Um, I think one big component is around how we work with other clusters, both at the global level, but also how we can support our cluster colleagues in the country level to also collaborate and work with other clusters and other sectors as well. Okay, um, so then, then maybe back to, to you, Dare, on this one. So if those are our key stakeholders, how do you think this strategy is actually gonna help them? You mentioned, you know, it's not just something to have on the shelf behind you. So, so let's ask a difficult question. How is this strategy actually gonna assist those key stakeholders? I think we have been working in the CCCM field and the cluster and the sector for, uh, for, uh, for more than a decade and a half. We realize that the cluster, this specific cluster has many challenges, but it has many opportunities as well. I believe that this strategy will help everyone by demystifying CCCM, not only to the CCCM actors, not only to the CCCM practitioners, but the world in general. When we speak about advocacy, when we speak about fundraising, when we speak about the different segments of the, of the, of the, of the strategy, when we speak about capacity development, it is more to bring some of the walls of CCCM where people find it difficult, make it easier, show how does this relate to the day-to-day -day life of the people, show that CCCM is not just a duplicate or a silo for any other activity in the field. It is rather a very key and a very important sector and a very important cluster that complements and it brings more quality to all what other clusters are doing. So in my opinion, this strategy will help by bringing an easy to read dictionary for the internal but more for the external actors to understand the vitality and the importance of the CCCM cluster and how to implement it. And then it will lead us hopefully for more funding, more visibility and more acknowledgement. Okay, so th those are big words from Juan and there. It sounds like it's a very good idea. It sounds like it's uh, well thought through, but let's, let's have a look now and see what the key stakeholders themselves think. So we've got a video on this. And what we did is we, we picked three key stakeholders uh, we sent them some questions, we got them to respond to the questions, record themselves doing it so you could all watch, and we've got them here. So, Alistair, if you have that video ready, could you uh, load that up so we can have a look and see what some of our key stakeholders think of the new strategy? Thanks. I'm Monica Ramos. I'm the Global Watch Cluster Coordinator with UNICEF. I'm Mark Rotuno, Cluster Coordinator in Yemen for UNHCR. Hi there, my name is Priscilla Scalco. I'm the CCCM Cluster Coordinator for Mozambique with IOM. Well, this is really good timing for us. So the Global Watch Cluster, we've also just launched the development of our 2022 to 2025 strategic plan. So I see this as really great timing and a great way to continue the dialogue and how we can work more closely together with the CCCM cluster. The strategy is very helpful and complements our work in Mozambique because the cluster is an expansion here and we have new partners joining as we move forward. So it's gonna help us to maintain focus and also prioritize activities that are pertinent to the context here, as well as also mobilizing resources according to the plans of the partners and the needs on the ground. I think the strategy of broadening access to training services for local partners is very important. It's a key need here in this country, for instance, in Yemen, and it would be very good to have a strategy of strengthening the trainings for local capacities. 
So I think some of those points coming out of the strategy are really where I see that we'll have complementarity and where ultimately the strategy can also influence the work that we're doing currently in developing our next strategy. Actually, it's layout. It's uh, conciseness. You see the visual elements. This is very good. It gives us very concrete tools to operate, to support the partners in their operations. I also did like to see, I and mean, I was happy to see, the emphasis on intercluster, intersectoral uh, collaboration as a priority. And really, as I said earlier, how we can work together and make the linkages to deliver a more holistic, people-centered approach to the overall responses that we're providing for those most in need. It's very difficult to explain clearly what are the values and what is the nature of CCCM to non-CCCM actors or non-technical actors uh, and explain it to, to ordinary audiences, right? So if you are not able to explain it at the beginning, how can you advocate for it? I think it's ambitious enough. I think that there is still uh, quite a ways to go to reach that. And I think equally I would say the same for what I'm expecting to come up out of our upcoming strategy. But I think that the aims and the goals are very well articulated. And I really think that we'll be looking to the CCM strategy to also build um, certain aspects of our strategy. So really just a big congratulations to the colleagues from CCCM and I do wish uh, everyone the best in the upcoming annual meetings and, and events. I know it's an exciting time of the year. Thank you. So there you go. That were the views of three people, probably three friendly people, I think it's fair to say. So um, they, they were quite pleased about the strategy. Um, Now's your chance. So we're going to, well, I'm going to ask Juan and Dare if they can present the overall strategy and the, and the specific elements of the strategy to you. So you get a chance to see it in detail if you haven't already. The link is there in the chat that you've seen a little bit further up the chat. So one might put it again, but this will give you a chance to follow it as you go through. As you go through, take a note, because I'm going to come back to you. This is not just a listening session. I'm going to ask you to input your views on this, again, via a poll. But also, we're going to have a chance to grill one and dare on this a little bit. So I want you to think about what it means for your operating context. And if you face challenges in these sorts of things, then form that question and come back and be ready to ask that question because we're going to break this into chunks and we'll, we'll hear it in each chunk and then we'll have a chance for you to input questions. So please do input any questions you have into the chat um, and, and yeah, just have a think about what, how this relates to you. Okay, so without further ado, Juan, I, I think you're going to start. Are you ready to um, present the detail of the strategy? You're just on mute, Juan. So that's one to you and one to Dare, one point each. There we go. Great, I'll hand it over to you. Cool, um, so as, as I mentioned before, um, this took us, um, I think around like half of last year's, I think to do all the consultations and then to frame and to shape and, and validate and, and also to do a, a kind of final look at some of the key components. Um, I think Charlie pointed out last year how long our vision and mission statements were in uh, on on our website, and and I think we spent um, also spe like specific time to discuss this. Um, so I think, as as you know, um, you know that we work to represent displaced people. Um, and I think those that specifically those that live in camp and camp like settings, and it is about fair and dignified access to assistance to information and protection for as long as necessary. Of course, what we would like to be seeing is that these communities and populations um, have their rights and dignity respected and are able to access um, assistance and protection and information that they require. So with this in mind, um, we then also look at, you know, where, like, what's our foundational values. Um, and I want to say right off that, obviously, as a cluster, and, and I think as a, as a camp management agencies for all of the 
um, the cluster, but also the strategic advisory group, we all agree that, you know, camp uh, and camp like settings should always be a last resort. Um, and we build on top of that, um, obviously looking at the, you know, ensuring that this is uh, the life saving, the life uh, quality of life and safety of people, um, and also to promote accountability. Um, we work very much to represent the whole population. And we also work to promote participation, empowerment, um, and engagement of those that are displaced in these settings. So I think, I feel this was one of our big kind of moment, the previous discussion we just had around, you know, who are the stakeholders? What are we trying to achieve? And I think we're able to boil this down to four key goals for the clusters. Um, and the first one is around making sure that everyone working in CCCM operations and coordination have the knowledge and the skills that they're required to make sure that their programming is inclusive um, and, and is, is of good quality. We also wanna make sure that they feel empowered um, to localize and to adapt and apply CCCM responses into the context that they work in. And I think what Monica also mentioned in her video, um, we very much, I mean, we're, we're a cross cutting sector and it's not possible for us to work without the collaboration and, and the, uh, with all the different actors and sectors. Um, we're a bit of like jack of all trades and we do need to engage. I think as Der mentioned as well, that we do work with everyone and, you know, as, as needed and required. And I think number four is probably not the news for most people working in CCCM. We do struggle a little bit on, you know, improving visibility and recognition. And I think specifically like recognition of why CCCM is a life-saving um, sector uh, and activities that is vital at the, like at the onset of the crisis. Um, as well as through from preparedness through to transition um, and in search for durable solutions for the displaced populations. So with this, we came up with three priority areas of work, but I'm gonna come back to this slide after a quick interruption by Charlie. Is that right? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna interrupt you because this is quite a lot of information for, for people to take in in one go. So I, I want to do this in chunk. So you've had a chance to have a look at, you know, how we got to these priority work areas, the vision and mission, what the cluster's all about. And, and these overall, you know, the overall view of it. So what I want to do really quickly is I'm going to take over share and I'm just going to do a really quick poll, like a one minute poll. So um, if I take you here, if you are able to, should have a mentee there, if you are able to grab your phones, go to menti.com and put in that code. So new code this time, it'll be 25. 10 so 2510 and then it will be 3761 and just tell us to what extent do you agree or disagree with these statements so does this strategy describe the cluster clearly does it feel like something you can sign up to are you do you feel motivated by it does it feel like something you want to engage in and what about the level of ambition? Is it the right level of ambition? Are we being too ambitious? Are we being not ambitious enough? What do we think? And if you've already thought of those things, feel free to give us some more questions in the chat. I've got four questions already from Amy, Joe, Omar, Mohammed, and Haki. So I'm getting ready to fire those at one and there. So you might wanna have a look at those, get ready to answer them. Um, but let's see what's coming in on this. We've got 14 responses so far. I'm gonna leave that open and allow people to just keep putting in the answers here and see what you think. Um, whilst I do that, maybe let's put one of these questions to you. So um, a first question, a, a kind of an important question here from Haki. So maybe to you one, um, the question is, about whether this strategy covers only refugee components or IDP components as well. Um, so do you want to um, take that? 
Right. Um, the cluster system or the cluster approach under the interagency steering committee um, is for, is addressing the um, response to internal displacement. Um, so our mandate as a cluster, as a global cluster, is to support those working um, the coordination mechanism in this uh, internal displacement settings. Having okay. said that, um, this does not only apply for, sorry, Charlie, doesn't apply only for like formally activated IASC clusters um, as the global team also work to support um, others, but the refugee coordination um, system is, is a slightly different one. Okay, thank you. That's really clear. So um, I think it's Amy Jo or Amy, I'm going to take your question for Dare. So um, Dare, now that the global cluster strategy has been published, what are the needs or expectations to update and align country strategies to the global strategy? I, I think this is, this is a good question. And uh, what I can tell is our strategies can be used. The global strategy can be used to provide some perspectives to the country strategies is as an example, most of the country strategies include capacity development, they include some some advocacy uh, activities. Uh, they include many other similar issues that we have mentioned in the global strategy. So it can feed into aligning. I would say it can it can provide a vision, it can provide it, it can impress your strategy building because this somehow will will be seen by the different clusters. Um, so these uh, these activities should be there, could be there. Sometimes they are not relevant to some specific context. So that's why we should not never say that it has to be implemented there. But the other way around as well. I mean, we have also to, to accept the fact that we don't have any operational component in the global strategy. So it does not mean that it's not relevant. It is very relevant, but within this perspective. So whatever you have questions within these levels of the global strategy, have a look at it when you develop your strategy. Feel free to come to one, to myself, to the team to ask for any, any possible advice from our side to specifically align the, the, the country level strategies to the global strategy. Thanks, Dear. And, and then one, a, good, a really good question, I think, from Omar. If I interpret this correctly, Omar, the question is around what are the expectations of the global cluster themselves, like as, as a body of, of individuals, um, in terms of this global strategy? So what, what are the expectations on the global cluster itself to actually implement the strategy? Right. I think having a strategy is, is one thing. I think I am working towards it and being able to monitor um, the impact that the global cluster can have, I think in supporting the, the field missions and clusters is, is our next big challenge and something we're working towards. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully it's, you know, it is meant we set it for a three year uh, strategy and, and hopefully we're able to each year come back and say what we've achieved. Um, but also at the same time, it's, it's also for everyone to contribute towards um, the achievement, I think, as a whole, as a sector um, for CCCM. So, you know, we're always also open for contributions or suggestions on, on how you would like to see some of these components um, implemented. Okay, great, thank you. Let, let's take a quick look at these, the results from the Mentimeter now, because we've got nearly 50 people have, have answered. If you haven't seen this sort of chart on Mentimeter before, as well as looking at the numbers, it's also worth looking at the curve. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the shape of the hills, if you like, in the background or the mountains, because that shows the distribution of responses. So what it shows, for example, that a lot of people feel they could really strongly sign up to the, the, the um, strategy. But the reason the average is at 3.5 is because at the other end, there are a few people who are really strongly disagreeing and saying, I just couldn't sign up to this strategy at all. This is a really interesting point of view. So if you feel strongly about this, feel free to let us know in the chat why you do. Um, I think the general feeling is that it describes the cluster clearly. Or if you haven't got your mute on, it'd be great if you can put it on. Um, the strategy describes the cluster clearly. It seems that there's quite a lot of agreement on that. In terms of the right level of ambition, there's a bit of a smaller spread there, isn't there? It's a wider hill. 
So there's probably a bit of agreement, but there's also a little bit of disagreement there. It'd be interesting. Again, if you have views on that, feel free to jump in and, and share those in the chat. Let us know why you're saying what you're saying. It'd be really interesting to hear it. Okay, maybe let's go to that first goal um, in terms of the strategy. So uh, I think Juan's gonna talk us through that. So Juan, if you wanna just take over the share or I will stop sharing and you can take over the share. Juan's being really good and responding to the chat whilst getting ready to do a presentation as well. So I'm gonna buy some time for her by just keep talking. So um, yeah, Juan, do you wanna go ahead and Thank just you. tell us just about the first area, please? Right. Um, so one of the first areas that we talked about, and I think there's been also increasing requests uh, for our global cluster team as well, um, is around training services. Um, and I think this, um, the training services uh, can be provided to local actors, to communities, um, to local and national authorities. Um, we certainly, I think, last no the year before we launched a global um, annual learning need assessments and we feel that this is uh, was very valid in helping us guide the way in which we uh, target um, the kind of training su supports um, and we're also hoping that I think I guess maybe on the side we're hoping to engage more local actors this is why the first deliverables talk about having more targeted trainings um, that target local actors. We definitely would like to be working on improving and enhancing our e-learning um, over the next year or two. Um, and, and also, um, you, most of you will know that uh, we, we launched a revised and updated training package last year. So hoping to also um, have the resource and the capacity to carry out a training of trainers. Um, again, I think like, um, and also to update the existing trainers to make sure that they're also up to date on, on our current um, training materials. And I think we're seeing more and more also the shift towards not just trainings, but also including like mentoring as part of the capacity development um, process. So those are some of the things that um, we feel that at a push we should be able to achieve in the in the coming years. Um, so yeah, we, we talk about how to um, run a regular um, learning need assessment, um, how I think things around like e-learning, but also more targeted training, hopefully also means broader access for local actors. And I think over time, as we do more and more online trainings in the past one and a half years, we're also able to, I think, simplify and I think become more practical about the kind of skills and knowledge that are necessary and required and how to tailor make the different trainings um, when we do conduct them online. Um, so that's from my part on the training service component. So over to you, Dirk. Oh, well, just before you go ahead, Dan, I'm going to, I'm going to, no, I'm going to jump in. I'm sorry. I know this wasn't what we planned, but I think it's so interesting to get people's views and hear their questions. I know you two are trying to avoid the really difficult questions, but I don't care. We're going to get them to you. So, um, so keeping that in mind on your screen there, if you, if you all participants grab your phones and where you were on Menti on that same poll you were on a moment ago, you'll see the questions have changed now. So I want, I want to hear your views just regarding these training services. So are these the best things to focus on? Are these the things that we should be putting our efforts into as a global cluster? Is there something else that's more important? And then do these enabling strategies make sense? You know, are these things that, um, that are the right things to go for? Will, will this work? Um, and then finally, I think most importantly, is this relevant to your work? Is this actually useful? Does this apply to what you're facing in your operational context? And as soon as I invited people to do that, someone jumped straight on and scored all three of them as a strongly disagree. So we really want to hear from that person. Um, so Jorn's put a great message into the chat, but I think he's directed it straight to me. So Jorn, you might want to send that out to everyone. I think that's worth sharing. 
And you can see there's some good questions coming in as well. So whilst you're answering on the mentee, also keep coming your questions coming in. We've got a good question from Shantosh, who, who's come in there with one. And I think we had one from Elias earlier too. Um, and it looks like yawn has got one, but I think that might just be advertising his session, to be honest. He's so, he's so marketing friendly, that man. He knows what to do. I think it's spam. Yeah, it's spam. Just delete it, everyone. It's spam. Send it to the spam folder. Only kidding, Jorn, only kidding. Okay. Uh, because so the vision and the strategy is about who we are and why do we do this. So obviously, if you want to have a purpose, this is where you should contribute. But uh, it's supporting the discussions we're having now. Absolutely. No, it totally is. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that CCCM faces in terms of explaining its value to, to people who aren't familiar with the work of CCCM. Um, and that is what's going to happen in, in your session at the end of the week. So don't miss that one. OK, um, so you can see the answers or actually uh, I, I'm going to I'm just going to share my screen uh, so you can see these answers coming on the mentee, because otherwise I think only I can see it, which is a bit unfair. Um, so let me do that. And you can see how people are scoring here. And whilst you're having a look at that, I'm going to direct some of these questions. So maybe one for you, Dare. So let's take um, uh, Shantosh's question. So how does global CCCM strategy foresee to support, to mobilize or raise resources to the field and field missions? Is it worth taking this one now or would it be better? Because in, in a moment, you're going to talk directly about this part of the strategy, aren't you? So what do you think, Dare? Do you want to take that now or do you want to take it a bit later? As we go with the presentation, I think we answer when we, when we present the right slide on that one. Okay, great. Um, so then I had another question that had come in from Elias. So request for clarification, uh, dispersed IDPs not included in the strategy. Uh, Dare, do you want to answer that one? Dispersed IDPs. Dispersed IDPs. I, I cannot see the chat. Dispersed IDPs, correct? Yeah, that's the question. I'm not sure I fully understand it, I'll confess. Um, okay. So earlier, think... so just request for clarification. Okay. Go ahead. I, I... Well, do you want? Okay, I, think, I think the questions that IDPs are not in urban and in rural areas and IDPs are not living in specific collective, collective uh, locations. I mean, it's you know, in general, the CCCM, we say that we focus on locations where there is a, a communal setup of living because it requires whenever there is a more than one living family, which reaches different people from different locations, regardless how small the number is, we need to set a, a level of governing mechanism to respond to the needs of those people. It does not mean that we don't respond to those who are dispersed few uh, few uh, uh, kilometers from where these sites are. Of course, we will respond to their needs by covering their needs but maybe the way of responding to their needs is not captured by the strategy maybe it should not be captured by the strategy because it has to be a needs space so the the the, the entire um uh, objective of this of the strategy is to respond to a setup of, of a group of idps living together whether informal informal sites uh, 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 collective centers transit centers etc etc so i hope this answers yeah. the question Thanks, Dad. If that doesn't answer your question, Elias, feel free to, to rephrase or, or add additional question in the chat or just contact us directly. Um, so Jimmy's come just, with a... Uh, Charlie? Just one yes. more question to complement on what one... I think we have we have few more minutes, right? So we are not very late, but just a quick one, oh, which one really answered it. Uh, Richard, regarding the durable solutions, very important question to complement what Juan mentioned. It is important for CCCM. CCCM is often, people say that you only focus about camps. You only want camps. You don't want you know, people to be, camps are problems. Look at the Dab, look at Kakuma, look at uh, uh, all Zatari camp, look at the Atma camp in Syria, you know, like CCCM actors, they just create pull factors. You know, there are sometimes these kind of wrong feelings about the CCCM actors. The CCCM is the other way around rather. We are trying to avoid people coming to camps as much as possible from the beginning. But in the meantime, when they come to the camps, we want to make sure that they have a dignified response, but not in a way that we encourage people to seek other alternative solutions. The camps are, and they should always be, the last, the last, last resort for the people, because it's not a solution. You see, when the people grow up in the camps, there are always many problems that are happening just because those people were not given other solutions, one. And the second, once and whenever there is a camp established, 
all the CCCM actors are support to take the lead and become the elite in discussing durable solutions with the different actors. We have to give advices to wash cluster, to, CC, to, to education cluster, to health clusters, to find a way together with them to have those people go for a more durable solutions out of camps, more dignified life, more a uh, uh, life which is independent from aid, aid uh, assistance by the people, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, it is very much related indeed to durable solutions. Thanks. Uh, and you can, I think we can all tell that is a, that is a important thing in Dare's heart, uh, durable solutions. So Manny cares a lot about it. When you've got your hand raised, you're a presenter. You don't need to raise your hand. You can just, just jump on the mic. I, I was just thinking that um, I think you would really, uh, sorry, this is Ilias. Um, I think you would really also enjoy the next session on minimum standards for camp management um, and why this, why we target um, settings where there's a communal or collective settings um, to the displacement. Brilliant, thank you. Now, just before we go to the next section, just let's turn our attention to uh, the results on the Menti. I think this is generally positive. It looks like if we look at the shape of the hills behind the scores as well, most people are saying that these are the best things to focus on. The strategies do make sense. And actually, this is really relevant to our work. If you look at the scores on that one, um, really high scores right up to the strongly agree. So it seems that for at least for the 39 people who've the 40 people who've responded, that's making a difference. If you're sitting and, and seeing this screen and saying, oh, no, that's complete nonsense, I disagree, then get onto your phone and, and send us in your poll on Menti or send in your question or your comment. We really want to see it. Okay, so um, Juan and Dare, I'm going to hand back to you now. So Juan, if you want to load the presentation and Dare, just tell us about that second part of the strategy and then I will interrupt you again to get some more input from our participants because they're the most important people here. So within, within all what we have discussed, and I think uh, Juan has been developing the strategy before my arrival, so she took the, the core part of the, of the strategy, the goal, the values, uh, we answered the questions together. Then a component of the strategy is policy tools and guidance. It is something done after checking a lot with you. We wanted to make sure that the, the policies are, are up to date because the humanitarian world is changing. There are lots of discussions about having a longer term strategies, the, the, the conflict segment is changing, the, the way of movement is changing. So basically we wanted to make sure that the global cluster is supporting you by learning from other countries, but also us taking this role of, of the global umbrella to bring the different lessons, good practices from the field and develop policies, develop tools and develop guidance to help you all together see what exactly is happening in the different parts of the countries and what discussions are happening in the in the in the in the global levels at the donors at the OCHA levels at the development actors and of course then this should be relevant to all the context it has to be getting this information from a different community of practice and it has to have a solid information management uh, uh, deliverable capacity this is an important enabling strategy for us we have to get out of this competitive mindset between the organizations. I can tell the only and the only way for CCCM to shine and to succeed, and I can tell this, the only, having worked in this for a decade and a half only in CCCM, is a partnership mindset. Then the donors and the others will be able to see as a very strong power, other sectors will be able to see as a very strong power. The ability to adjust the trends, the emerging trends, as we discussed about it, having the camp when people come to avoid it, but when they are at the camp, you know, it, things are changing. So to make sure that we use the uh, we use the right language, and then the region to region sharing of resources, this cross fertilization between the regions. We don't have to recruit someone, train, or bring an expert. <laughs> So whoever's speaking, if you could just put your mic on mute, that would be really helpful. Thanks. Uh, if it was a question, I'm sorry, I did not understand it, but um, yes, I think now it's on mute. And then we have to also translate into different languages. We are translating the strategy, we are translating the camp management standards, the toolkits to the languages as much as possible, as much as we can. So if there's also any support, any request from your side on translating or volunteering to translate the tools to other languages, please let us know. Next, please, one. Just before you do one, 
um, just because I want to stay on this part of the strategy first. Actually, yeah, let's go, let's go ahead to let's go ahead to the next one and hear a bit about the next one and then we can compare both. So remember to ask your questions to all of the participants on either of the, these tools and guidance or on this last section on advocacy and resource mobilization. Thank you, Charlie, and thank you, Juan. I think um, we, we discussed a lot of, of this, the advocacy and the resource mobilization. There was at least one question about that. Probably there are more questions about the resource mobilization. First, we really have to work jointly to bring a, a clear explanation of what CCCM is. I have always been telling that CCCM is probably the emergency unit of a bigger hospital in the cluster system. We have to be there. We have to save the lives of the people, but once their life is we also have to move them to other sections. We have to move with the different sections. We have to bring doctors to different. So it is really a very much coordination role, and we have to really be very much confident of explaining it to different actors. Otherwise, it will be seen a difficult one to understand. So this is our advocacy messages that we are trying to impose. Then, with that, to bring more visibility to clusters online. I mean, I think clusters online it means in different arenas. It's it's more. There's the social way. There are all these meetings that we are having now, 150 people, more than 500 probably registered to different events along the day and along the week. But also to bring more online arenas to express, to speak about CCCM, to tell what it is. Preparedness and negotiations, uh, country and regional coordination platform, this is important. We have to be, we should not get into any crisis as it is the first crisis we see in our life. We should always be ready prepare ourselves so when the crisis happens, when there is a need for CCCM, we are having some practice already that we learned and we prepared for. And then, of course, this advocacy and this resource mobilization will be by training people, by having, because we are having difficulties in finding expertise in CCCM, whether it's coordination or management. So training, information is important. You know, we have globally, we have Brian and Elisa, all of us, information management is a key thing. They are working closely with each other to help all of you. And then support to the clusters and the cluster-like countries. Whenever there is a need, Juan and myself and the team here, we are discussing to see what is the best way for us to provide support. So this is again in the in this specific aspect of, of resource mobilization. Next. We need to enable this. We have to establish a library of impact of CCM interventions. This is, this is what the CCCM brings. We have to show the evidence to people. And what will happen if CCCM was not there? We have plenty of exercise. We have plenty of examples on this. The countries where the CCM managed to bring this has brought a lot of attention by the donor community, acknowledgement by the authorities, and of course, it had really impacted the lives of the IDPs in a very positive manner. The other clusters, OCHA, Development actors have been really appreciating UNFCR's capacity to bring this library to say what exactly this will bring in terms of difference. Intercluster mechanisms, it's a bit difficult topic. It's not definitely a notch uh, uh, repetition. It is not a pillar. It is a way to engage, increase the people's engagement in the intercluster. We are the ones who tell the people go and work with the wash clusters. We are the ones who are telling the people go and wash and work with the subcluster of that of that other education. We are the ones who are telling the health cluster that people are not able to reach the hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. So this brings a lot of work to the, uh, to the intercluster mechanisms. Global cluster capacitated support country clusters. We, again, we have, we have uh, to bring more capacity ourselves by advocacy to be able to help you whenever there is a need to scale up. You know, In some countries, you are not able to bring more than what is needed at a certain stage, but probably you will need a three months or two months or one month capacity. This is something also we have have been trying to advocate for more to help you and then fundraising experts. So again, this is a difficult one for us. CCM has not been very much blessed with the fundraising. I hope and I'm feeling confident that this will not last very long. I think that we will be probably very good soon working together in a fundraising, but this is something we also have to work on as a global cost. Thanks there. Um, and thanks, Juan, for, for pressing the button on the slide. So we have two areas there. We have policy tools and guidance, and we have advocacy and resource mobilization. So I would just like to take your views first on the policy tools and guidance. So I'm just going to share my screen on that. And you can see it's the same Mentimeter code you had before. Um, 
let's see see just share, take a moment to share your vote with us do are these things on policy tools and guidance the right things to focus on do those enabling strategies make sense and i think on policy tools and guidance the most important thing is about sharing them and making sure they're implemented because it, it's relatively straightforward to develop a policy or develop guidance or tools what's more challenging is encouraging people to use them so is this going to work is this the right way to do it is it relevant to your work is it what you need um, take a moment to vote and let us know we seem to be getting some pretty strong views in what would suggest that it is what's needed um, which would be good one of the points that came through um, on the chat came through directly to me so I can ask it. Um, and maybe it's a question for you one, I'll turn it into a question, is about how did you ask CCCM members at national level about their expectations of the global CCCM cluster? Um, and then how did you reflect those in the strategy? So really important to ask people uh, working at different operational contexts their expectations of the global cluster and how did you feed those in? Right, um, and Charlie, feel free to add in because I think you are also involved in that process. Um, I think we we did, if if I remember correctly, um, we did um, a survey, but we, uh, basically through our cluster coordinators um, and we also ask for any kind of, um, if they're able to also have a, a group discussion with the cluster members around this as well. And those were the inputs that were then used. Um, Charlie and, and the team also basically um, carry out, like they, they do analysis and, and summary of those inputs. Um, and this is then put forward and discussed at the SAG meeting um, as we develop the, the strategy. Yeah, certainly. And I think it's worth adding that as well as the survey, we had a series of local workshops as well, didn't we? So uh, some people volunteered to hold local workshops to get that input on what was needed. And that's that's what the strategy was drawn from. And it, it seems that at least on the policy tools and guidance element, the results of this Menti are showing that. Again, it's showing that the vast majority of people, 31 respondents are saying these are the best things to focus on. The enabling strategies do make sense, although that dips off a little bit. So not many people strongly agree with that, although lots probably agree. Um, and, and most people seem to suggest that's relevant to their work as well. So if you have any further questions on policy tools or guidance about what you need, how you're getting them, how they're shared, this is your chance to, to ask these directly or just make your comment, even if it's not a question, just feel free to put it into the chat and let us know what you think about this. Really helpful to see this stuff. So thank you for all of those who have put it in the chat. And remember, if you want everyone to see it and you want it to be recorded in the, in the recording of the session, put it in the chat to everyone. You can write to me directly, as some people have done, which is great. But when you write to me directly, it won't be captured in, in the meeting because uh, the direct chat's not captured there. Okay, so let's, let's have a look then at the last section. And this is often the most controversial section. So advocacy and resource mobilization. You heard what Dare presented. Um, do you think that these are the best things to focus on? Will this stuff work? Um, do you think that this is, um, this is relevant to your work, this idea of resource mobilization? I find that when we talk about these topics, often in strategies, people say, this is great. It's a great thing to do, but you know, how are we gonna do it? We haven't got any resources. We haven't got any support or, or money or enough people, et cetera. So really interested in what you say on this one. Whilst we're waiting for that, Dare, do you wanna make any, or Juan, do you wanna make any comments on this section? Um, there are a couple of questions coming in, but just before I take that, are any particular comments or thoughts you want to share on this, this section of the strategy about resource mobilization? Mm. And I'm just seeing Maxine's uh, comment as well on like how to overcome competitive mindset when effectively we are competing for, um, I guess the same or similar pot of money as well during operations. And I think that's, that's really valid. I think, um, and I think our organizations, you know, understandably on the operational fronts, there's certainly a, a collective, um, no, sorry, a competitive nature to it at times. But I think from the coordination side, I mean, it's, 
Um, it's also to make sure that CCCM is on the list of sectors to be funded right from the beginning. Um, some of the challenges we've had is when in responses, uh, CCCM cluster is not was not activated along with other clusters. And I think that's something we've been working quite a lot um, from both of the cluster lead agency side, uh, working with country um, operations and coordinations and other partners to also advocate and push for this to happen. Um, because it's like having a you know the space in the HRP, having a seat at the table at the inter cluster discussion, um, and making sure that we're there to also to put forward our case um, to donors and um, and I think also interestingly is that as we work with more local actors. Um, it's interesting because I think they also have completely different funding sources. And I think that's like bringing in a little localization uh, conversation as well uh, to resource mobilization. I think it's it's also um, an opportunity for us to to engage local actors and by kind of as an end product also engage other funding sources. And to add on that, um, Charlie is. Um, Max. This is really, I mean, the question is basically, your question is how do we succeed? Because once we are able to go beyond this level, become strategic, become leaders, become professionals as clusters, then we will bypass, we will go beyond that one because there's always this competitive environment. The, the, the global bargain came with a, with a comparative advantage is to make sure that there is a space for everyone to work together but also in the meantime, the clusters and the cluster coordinators have to be independent from their organizations. They have to be independent from any fundraising. They have to really bring one leadership and the one and myself here, we have to commit to that one. Uh, and, and we do, we have to, we, we, can, we can be questions, we can be asked. No, of course, there's a decentralization. There are countries doing different levels. They are fully free. There are sometimes misunderstanding, but we have to promote this otherwise, as I said, your question is how do we succeed? Because without this, we will not succeed. And if you look to the countries where the CCCM succeeded, are these countries where this step was overcome. And it was, it was not impossible. It was actually possible by bringing the leaders to be able to sit together and work together. The failure happened when the opposite was happening or is happening. Okay, I, I think a really good point coming in from Jorn here. Um, you mentioned earlier there that, um, you know, it's not been the easiest to, to generate funds and resources for this work in the past. And John is uh, suggesting that we need to place ourselves differently in front of donors and other sectors to be more visible uh, to, to gain these resources. So practically to either of you, what do you plan to do that? What is actually gonna change that will make the CCCM cluster more attractive, more visible and gain more resources? Juan? Do you want to take this? Then I compliment. Yeah, I think um, I think over the last few years we've also been approaching donors bilaterally as well, and I think this, in conjunction with the development of the minimum standards for camp management, is also helping us raise the profiles, but also explain more. I think clearly, succinctly, with sub, you know, like a, also like how to measure the impact of CCCM work as well. And I think all of these contributes towards how we put ourselves forward um, as what, what Jorn is saying. I think our, one of our challenge is that is the cross-cutting nature of it. Um, and, and I think it's our, I think COVID has also raised a lot of the profile of, of what CCCM does, precisely what Jorn is saying. It's, you know, the regular day-to-day -day contact with the communities and the population and the host communities and the local authorities and you know the role that we play within the kind of bigger overall response is is extremely important and yeah and i guess we can keep you know banging and knocking on those doors um to do it but i think we're definitely hoping that um we would also be able to develop uh, the you know the resource mobilization or communication strategy for the global clusters as well in the coming year um, 
well, hopefully that we secure some funding to be able to bring in more, I think more uh, capacity, I think also into the global team to be able to focus on this as well. Thanks, Juan. So, I mean, look at, and look at this response on the poll, there seems to be significant agreement that these are the best things to focus on. I mean, there's a huge sort of mountain at the end of that blue line, which is, which is great. A bigger question about whether enabling strategies makes sense, to be honest, that's really kind of spread flat across. Um, and then we're joining someone else on the phone call, I think. So if Alistair, if you can spot who's not on mute and perhaps mute them, that'd be great. Um, interestingly, in terms of is this relevant to my work, again, there's a slightly more mixed approach there. So perhaps some people have got loads of resources and they don't need any more. Um, I, I'm sure that's not the case. Um, but look, thanks for this. I think this is really helpful. What I'd like to do now is firstly, I'd like to thank Dare and Juan. I've worked with several organizations on their strategy and it's very common that they sit in a darkened room and they write it and they send it out and tell everybody what it is. It's less common that they're prepared to take the time to do it properly and, and really um, try to consult with as many people as they can. And it's even less rare that they're prepared to come to a global meeting in front of 130 people and take open questions about the strategy. So this is a chance for you all to practice your, um, your Zoom skills and, and give a virtual or real round of applause to Dare and Juan for, for coming on and, um, and doing that because I think it makes a big difference. The other things, oh, look at the Zoom skills happening. Everyone knows how to applaud. Thank you, everybody. The other thing that makes a huge difference to the strategy is, of course, you, because uh, the global cluster is made up of and represented by all of the people that are involved in, in CCCM work globally. Um, and so what I want you to do is, if you haven't had a go on this poll already yet, the last question on the poll on this today is one thing that you will do one thing that you will do to contribute to this strategy over the next three years. And let's see how many of our 120, 130 participants we can get to respond to this. Let's aim for at least half. So I'd love to see 65 responses. So please just take the last couple of minutes of this session to grab your phone, go to menti.com, put in that code at the top of the screen that is 25, 10, 37, 61, and just tell us one thing that you will do to contribute to this strategy from 2021 to 2023. Um, and I want to see these coming through. They'll, they'll come through and they'll start pouring up and down the, the screen. So here they come. So um, have a look at what other people are putting as well. It might inspire you to add something yourself, but we're really keen to gather as many of these as we can. Once you've had a chance to do that, uh, we'll just see what's coming in. Uh, so sharing relevant documents with our government counterpart, incorporating it in our national cluster strategy, fantastic. Provide training to local NGOs, provoke the minimum standards. Uh, use the strategy to strengthen our response strategy, push into cluster coordination. Learn it, own it and use it. I love that. Learning it is the key thing, right? We've tried to make the strategy as succinct as possible. So it's really important you get a chance to take a look at it. I promise it won't take more than five minutes to read from top to bottom. Take a moment to look at these. I'll leave them on the screen so they'll scroll up and down. Um, we've got 16 people respond so far. Maybe some of them are responding more than once. You can put up to three things if you want to. Rolling up quickly to 20 responses. Let's see if we can get a bit higher. See if we can get up to 40 or 50 or maybe even 60. Jumped up to 24, which is great. One or dare, is there anything you're seeing on there that's, that's making you think, challenging you? I, I, I mean, I like a lot the learn it, share it and own it. But I think also particularly valid is the, the comment on, you know, do keep challenging us. I mean, I think as Dern mentioned in the beginning, I mean, we're colleagues um, and we're all working towards the same um, objectives and vision. And, and I don't think we, I don't think that works in a vacuum, you know, and, and I think it's important to keep uh, engaging and, and keep the conversation going. Yeah, agreed. Dare, any, any thoughts, any reflections on this from you? I, I think what, what I can tell is, pro 
from the comments that we are reading, the, we are delighted to see that whatever is written there is very much relevant. There is nothing that also coming from from the way you see the strategy, from the way you see CCCM completely out of view. And it's actually rather telling us to learn more from the global perspective. I'm, I'm learning a lot from what you are writing. So it's, it's really relevant, it's really important. And as, as also one of the comments says, it looks that you are owning it. So please keep owning it and let us be here uh, to help you with whatever you need, as one said, challenge us. Brilliant, thank you both. And thanks everyone who, who's responded to this. We've now have 42 of you put in these comments. We will collect all of these and all of these will be available as part of the report from this event and on the website afterwards. So you deserve a short break now. Um, well done, everyone. That's a really enjoyable session for me, at least. I hope it was for you too on strategy, really getting involved in that, which is great. So we're going to take a break now until quarter two. So whichever hour you're at, we'll be aiming at until quarter two. And when we come back, we've got a fantastic session on minimum standards with the minimum standards working group led by Jen. So we're looking forward to that. So take a break, grab yourself a coffee, and we will see you in about 17 minutes at quarter two. See you soon.